Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, we're going to be covering offset and move in the Lost Grid. Now, we have covered pretty much everything I wanted to go over in the Lost Grid, so this is going to be our last Lost Grid video for right now. However, it's going to be a good one. We're going to show you the difference between move and offset, and how you can position your columns exactly where you want them to. So let's get started right now. So to get started, we're going to just target the very first grid item, and we're going to do so by moving it over. So we can come in here, and I'm going to just say, I'm going to say grid one, and we have this lost row. We don't want this in here. Uh, grid one is now going to say lost hyphen move. Now lost move is going to show you exactly what's going on here. We can say we want us to move over, well, since we're doing one fourth right now, we can say we'll move it over one fourth. However, we're only going to want to target the very first child. So we can say div first hyphen child. Okay, so now with this grid one should be getting a lost move of one fourth. So let's actually come down here and see what that compiled to. If we scroll down, we can see it gives the first child a position of relative, and then it moves it over one fourth positioned. So you'll notice when we head to our HTML page and refresh, you'll notice we no longer see the first item. Now we don't see the first item because it's actually being hidden uh, behind this second element here via uh, Z index right now. But because of we're moving it over one, it's essentially just moving it over one whole space. For instance, if we were to say the last item here instead of first child, we could say last child. This might be a little bit more obvious because it's not going to be hidden anymore. We can come down here and refresh. And now we have one, you can see that the 10th item is actually is supposed to be positioned right here, but because it's at two position relative and being pushed over the left, we now have it over here. Now what's interesting about this is this is technically still in this left position because it's positioned relative and moved over with the left. It's not actually getting in the way of anything here. And if we were to add an 11th element, you would see something very similar happen to what we saw when the 1 went behind the 2. There would be an 11 here, and the 10 would uh, be, be behind the 11 just for a uh, z-index reason. Now, let's say we wanted to actually move something over to the left rather than to the right. Well, it's nice and easy. We can actually just say negative 1 4. So from here, we can just add a uh, hyphen inside of here, and when we refresh... You can see it's moved over, same column, same gutter, everything. It's just moved over one column space to the left now instead of to the right. So this is lost move. Lost move essentially moves your elements left and right or up and down based on uh, their current position and it moves them relatively over. Now what this doesn't do is it doesn't shift the entire grid or anything like that. It's essentially just moving them. So if we were to say something like uh, first child, first child, okay, let's move first child over one fourth and let's copy this, let's paste it down here and let's go and say nth child, we're gonna say the second child we're going to do so with parentheses instead of brackets. There we go. Sec second child. And then we're going to want to say negative one fourth here. Now, if we come back to our page and refresh, you'll see something really interesting. We now have two and then one. But if we come to our DOM, what's really nice is that it's still in the order of positions here. We have one and then two. However, displayed wise, they're shown two and then one. So what's cool about that is you can have like a left sidebar here and then a main content area and let's say your main content area can be pushed over the fraction at which it is and the left sidebar can be negative pushed over and that way they can still maintain their order in the DOM of importance. That way your main content area is coming before your aside content area or things like that just so that the DOM is structured the way that your uh, information is important. 
Okay, cool, so that's move. But let's actually try these same examples with offset instead. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this and the child move. And the first child, we're going to lost offset by one fourth. Now, lost offset provides a margin right. You'll notice the last one was done via position. Now this is done via margin right. So what might you think would happen here? If we refresh, you can see things get a little crazy. So it's essentially just adding one grid's worth of margin to the right here. So now this isn't something that you're going to want to do with the type of grid that has this sort of row column situation here. You can see it's sort of messing everything up. It still sees number four as the fourth element here. And since the cycle is on the fourth, it's gonna go ahead and cause some issues here by getting rid of the margin right here. Now, what happens if we throw a negative one fourth on here? It's gonna be fairly similar, except, so as you can see, lost offset is pushing things over and lost move is using position and relative to sort of make sure that they don't affect the rest of the grid. So offset is affecting the rest of the grid items and move is not. So with these two properties of lost, you can really put your grid items anywhere that you want based on the type of grid you're working with or trying to build. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video, hit me up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.